Today, we will continue to talk about some of the issues uh, related to how to get accurate results in FTTD simulation. Uh, last time, we talked about the issue of numerical dispersion, uh, which is, of course, an important issue in understanding the accuracy uh, of FTTD, uh, both from a practical point of view as well as from a theoretical point of view. Uh, today, though, I'm going to talk about an issue that uh, probably is not commonly talked about in uh, the theoretical study of FTTD, but in fact is practically quite important. And uh, that's an issue uh, related to how the dielectric constant is uh, being distributed on the FTTD grid. So let me give you an illustration. Uh, in the early part of this tutorial, we gave you this very simple example of trying to simulate the transmission spectrum uh, through a dielectric slab. So uh, here we have a silicon slab in air. Uh, the index is 3.5 and the thickness is 150 nanometer. So uh, for that purpose, we set up a computational cell and along the z-axis perpendicular to the slab, the computational cell occupy a region from z equal to minus 1.5 micron to z equal to 1.5 micron. And near the center of this computational cell, then we put the dielectric slab. And uh, here I'm going to show you two examples of this simulation, uh, in which case the, the only difference here is that we choose the center of the dielectric slab to be different. Uh, in one case, uh, with respect to this coordinate system, we choose the center to be at zero nanometer. And in the other case, we choose the center to be 12.5 nanometer. Now, in this simulation setup, we have chosen the space, spatial discretization along the Z direction uh, to be 25 nanometer. Uh, therefore, these two choices of the center of the slab differ by half the spatial discretization. Now, um, this may sound a little bit strange. So, because of course, uh, the physical results uh, should not depending on should not depend on uh, this particular choice of where the center of the dielectric slab is. But if you have used a very basic FTTD code, um, and I will define what that basic FTTD code really mean, uh, you are going to see something actually quite interesting. So uh, here is the simulation from a basic FTTD simulation. Uh, this is using a uniform grid uh, with uh, no subpixel averaging, no fancy things. In other words, that's what basic means. And the spatial digitization to reiterate is 25 nanometer. So the center here differ by half a grid point. So uh, the black curve here is the transmission spectrum when the center is set at zero nanometer. And uh, the blue line here is the transmission spectrum when the center is set at 12.5 nanometer. And to set a baseline, the red curve here is the analytic results when the uh, analytic result for this slab, which is 150 nanometer thick. So immediately what you see is that the blue curve, which corresponds to a center at 12.5 nanometer, is much closer to the analytic results as compared to the black curve, which is at the center of zero nanometer. Uh, in fact, you can see that the peak of the transmission peak of the resonances, these are the Fabry-Perl resonances that we mentioned earlier, uh, shifted uh, probably by approximately maybe 50, 50 terahertz or so, which is very, very large shift, uh, corresponding only to a small shift in the center position that you place your slab. Now, uh, to understand this a little bit more, uh, it is very important to think a little bit about how FTTD calculation actually is carried out. So uh, in this case, we're looking at normal instant light. So you can simplify the relevant part of the FTTD algorithm uh, by considering Maxwell equation uh, in one dimension. And uh, in one dimension, uh, the ease grid becomes simply just a stagger grid 
the electric grid where the electric fields are defined are shifted from the magnetic field grid where the magnetic field is defined by half a uh, grid discretization point. And in FTTD, the dielectric function uh, is uh, uh, in operation is uh, multiplication on the electric field. Therefore, it is very common that you will assign the dielectric function on where the electric field grid is. So the epsilon and the E are co-located, but E and H are not. Now, with this, the setting up of a dielectric structure in FTTD then translate into setting up the dielectric function at the electric field grid point. And so uh, let's start by taking a look at the more accurate case where we set the center to be 12.5 nanometer. So in this case, uh, a, we show you a typical algorithm for setting up the grid dielectric function. So as I mentioned, the center is at 12.5 nanometer. The thickness is 150 nanometer. And you have these red dots here, which correspond to the grid point. So uh, the most standard way you can think about is to say, well, let me start with the center. And then the half thickness of this is 75 nanometer. So any grid point that's have a distance from the center that's smaller than 75 nanometer, I'm going to assume it to be silicon. And anything that's outside, I'm going to assume it to be air. So, uh, and if you do this algorithm, again, the center is at 12.5, and you can see that uh, the uh, you have exactly six grid points that are assigned to the value of silicon dielectric function of 3.5, and outside is air. Right, the six uh, starts at minus 50 and ends at 75. Now, as I mentioned, the discretization is 25 nanometer. So if you have six grid points assigned, the nominal thickness that you actually simulate is also 150 nanometer. So the result is that your FTTD simulation actually agree quite well to the analytic work. So uh, now you can see a little bit of discrepancy. Uh, this comes about because we're using a fairly coarse grid uh, for uh, this particular structure. And therefore, uh, in this case, you have uh, a fact, effects of numerical dispersion, as we mentioned previously. On the other hand, if you shift the center of the slab by half a grid point, you can repeat this counting process. So in this case, the center is at zero nanometer and your algorithm is going to assign anything that's within 75 nanometer away from the center to be silicon. So if you repeat this algorithm, you are gonna see that the negative 75 nanometer here is gonna be assigned as silicon and the positive 75 nanometer here is also gonna be assigned as silicon. So consequently, if you were to count from here to here, from negative 75 to positive 75, and if you count this, in fact, you are going to have seven rather than six grid points that are assigned to be silicon. And therefore, even though you think that you are simulating a silicon layer that has a thickness of 150 nanometer, the way the dielectric constant is assigned, you are actually simulating a layer that's 175 nanometer thick. And in fact, if you take a look at the dash line here, which is this case where we send the grid point, send the slab center zero nanometer, and you compare with the analytic result for a thickness of 175 nanometer, you actually get pretty good agreement. So this single grid point difference account for a very large difference in the simulation results, as you see here. So the lesson here is that it is very important in FTTD to understand how the dielectric constant is assigned to the E lattice. And 
uh, a single grid point assignment difference can actually make a very large difference because that's a substantial change of the dielectric structure. So in this particular case, when we are simulating, for example, a silicon layer 150 nanometer, for example, we actually need to be very careful in making sure that the structure that you put in into FTTD really is had uh, really does have a thickness of 150 nanometer. Now, uh, so in general, and I think this is something to keep in mind, I'm showing in fact a very drastic example, but this is something to keep in mind. In general, when you do FTTD, uh, it is in fact quite important to understand how the electric constant is being assigned to the E-lattice in order to get accurate numerical results. Now, uh, in this case, you can also see that this is uh, uh, truly, I guess, a uh, quite annoying feature of FTTD that you actually have to think about dielect how dielectric constant is assigned if you use a bare bone FTTD algorithm. So as a user, I think it's quite reasonable that you should demand that you, are ha you have a code in which the uh, which does not suffer from this kind of subtlety. In other words, uh, the thickness of the slab, for example, uh, should not depend on where you choose the center of the slab in the uh, computational domain. And so uh, we talk about the slab geometry, but uh, this kind of issue arises in general for more complicated geometry as well. So uh, when it would be very desirable if one have an FTTD algorithm that does not suffer from this kind of consideration and subtlety. And so uh, this, uh, we're gonna talk about this algorithm uh, next time. And this lecture in many way provides you with a motivation in thinking about those kind of algorithm and the algorithm we'll be talking about uh, is subpixel averaging. So uh, thank you for listening and let me stop here.